My strategy is in five years' time that all of the seats on board the aircraft will be free. And we'll find some other way of getting money out of you, discretionary, by choice, gambling or something on board, whatever it is, charging you for the toilets, charging you for the oxygen masks, anything at all. But the seats would actually be free. This is my vision. I've been to the mountaintop. I've seen the light. In the future, it will be free. And then BA and Lufthansa, all, they're all screwed. So what else are you going to charge us for? Like? I don't know. Anything else I can think of that's not nailed down. Breathing on board, if I could, but the seat would be free. I mean, people laughed again. You know, we have this uh, dream that you know we take out, say, a third of the seats at the back of the aircraft, and put a standing uh, room only cabin into it with handrails. But I think you know, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, all of those would be free. On Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays, uh, we'd guarantee you that the fare to stand would be a fiver. We have three toilets on board our aircraft. We have 189 passengers. The average sector time, the sector time is about one hour, 15 minutes. If we could get rid of two of the three toilets, we could put in six extra seats onto the aircraft. Six extra seats would allow us to drop the average fare by 4% for every passenger on board. But we need fewer people queuing to go to the toilet. How do you get fewer people queuing to go to the toilet? Charge them for it. And then you will all go in the terminal before they depart, and they'll all wait until then go in the terminal when they arrive. And you simply, we use charges to kind of train people to travel in the most cost efficient way. We give the money we get for the toilet fees away to some charity for incontinent passengers or for incontinence in the young or the aged. We don't want the money. We want to get rid of two of the bloody toilets. Would it just affect freight sales then? Probably would. But again, you know, it's a one hour, 15 minute flight. We've always engineered a bit of turbulence. You know, if the drink sales are falling off, we do a bit of, get the pilots to engineer a little bit of turbulence. That usually spikes up the drink sales. <laughs> Every time we cut back a layer of cost, we see another layer of cost, and we go after that again. So That's why we're so able to keep next? driving down air force. Oh, if, if I knew what was next, we would be announcing it today. But you keep coming up with the ideas are getting more and more absurd, really, aren't they? You've got your toilet tax, you've got your fat tax. All the no, but they're, but they, I mean, they don't really happen, they just generate a bit of publicity. But the toilet, tax and the, the toilet tax has never been about generating revenue. The toilet tax is about reducing the number of people who use the toilets on board so that we can put more seats into the aircraft. That's what lowers the cost of air travel. Every idea we have is always about how do we make it cheaper and more affordable for people to fly Ryanair and avoid high fare airlines like British Airways, Lufthansa and Air France. So what's the next big idea? Come on, you must have one. I wish I did. I mean, if I had another big idea, we would... I think the next one we're working on is putting the mobile telephony on board the aircraft so that ultimately that will get us into in-flight gambling or in-flight entertainment because you'll have the payment mechanism on board the aircraft with mobile telephony and uh, credit card payments. So you'll have a poker game with one-hour flight? Hopefully a strip poker game on a one-hour flight. I'd pay to see it.